All right, so no real theme for today's video. I'm just going to have you follow me around today and see what in the world I choose to get into. You already missed breakfast. Laura made an awesome, awesome breakfast casserole and then just put it in the refrigerator. So super easy, pull it out, put it in a microwave, awesome breakfast. And now we go see if uh, there's anything exciting going on in the yard. We'll go feed some animals, move them around, that kind of stuff. Mr. Grant is releasing and feeding chickens. And this, my friends, is a box of thawed meat. I got a reasonable amount of meat donated to the farm uh, much of it is still good. Some of it's freezer burned. Some of it's really old, which is probably still good, but uh, we don't have a whole lot of freezer space. So, <clears throat> waste not, want not, right? This is uh, deer meat and wild pig that we will feed to our dogs. They're going to be super happy about it. Yeah, they're not going to be upset about that. Yeah, and then we have this. I don't even know how to explain that. Weirdest cat in the world. What are you doing, bro? Okay. All right, so keep in mind, most dogs, including ours, eat processed dog food on a regular basis, which is a bunch of soy and a bunch of corn and a bunch of garbage. So as much as we can, we try to give these guys real meat, deer, hogs, chicken, <laughs> and boy, do they love it. Look, happy girl. He's ready. They know what's, ah, don't you dare. <laughs> he almost knocked the whole thing down. Anyways, they know what's coming. They're excited about it. Right, Linus? What do you think, Miss Heidi girl? So for those of you that are unaware, uh, wild hogs are a nuisance in Texas and much of the United States. Um, they breed faster than predators can eat them, way faster. Um, so there are actually uh, special criteria for hunting hogs. I guess quite the opposite. Like you don't, uh, you don't need a tag to hunt hogs. Uh, if you own the property you're hunting on, you don't even need a hunting license. Um, there is no tag limit. You can hunt and harvest as many as you want. So, there's a lot of folks around here that uh, kill hogs. And a lot of them don't want that to go to waste. So they try to find people that are willing to harvest or process the meat. And I like to feed them to my dogs. Hungry mama. Little babies. Not so little anymore. They're getting big. <laughs> We're gonna move that in pretty soon. So they have some fresh ground to play on. We just want to keep them isolated for a short period of time to make sure that these little piglets are healthy, happy, not missing out on anything. We got some runts in the group. So yeah, we'll let them nurse our mama for eight weeks and then most of them will be sold to go to other farms. I haven't had Boris on the tube for a while. I'm not sure why, he's been, uh, see you Boris. He's been uh, a loner for a while. These girls have been having piglets and recovering. So he's been here by himself, hanging out. He is uh, a monster of a boar. He's easy. 600 pounds. 
he's a big boy. And Rosie Pig, she's separated by this electric fence. And uh, this young lady is over here gaining weight. She had the last group of piglets and they just take it out of them when they nurse. So we kind of, we keep them separated before they get bred again. <laughs> so, so they gain some weight, so we keep them healthy. Apparently they are not patient. So we're gonna feed them some slop. As gross as that is, they love it. This is uh, watermelon, squash, okra, just spent vegetables from a local farmer. Thanks, Courtney. Happy girl. This area was inside the pig fence. I moved the fence because look at all these volunteers growing. This is a, a tomato plant. That looks like a cucumber, no, not a cucumber, like a melon of some sort. They're growing everywhere. It's crazy. So, I know it's late in the season and it's fall, but we're gonna see if any of these will actually produce fruit. Mama's starting to wean them. So I'm gonna start putting a little bit of feed in there for them. They're over here rooting around in the food that got dumped out yesterday. The slop that she's eating. I dumped the bowl out periodically just cause <laughs> this guy's got broccoli hanging out of his mouth. Uh, this is feed from the, from the farm store. And that's just easy for them to consume. If mama will let them have any. But they gotta learn, so mama will teach them. Good job, mama. So Lara has already milked and fed these ladies. They're just waiting for me to finish up with the cows and we'll move them through the cow paddock out into the forest. Thanks, Libby. And Grant, it has fed our outside goats. We have actually three different sections currently. We have two in quarantine because they're new and uh, we just keep them separated uh, until we know that they're healthy. Um, we have a few that are with, sorry, it's bright, <laughs> that are with Louie, the buck. Um, these are the new girls. Hi, sweetie. Pretty girls. Uh, Louis is the buck. Uh, only a select group can be with him because we don't want all of them to be pregnant at the same time or some of them need to recover after they've already given birth. And then there is whew, the group that doesn't need to be pregnant but also doesn't need to be in the milk barn. So they're out with Heidi. So this Lila. Miss Lila, you hungry girl? Yeah, Mr. Grant's feeding these guys. Mr. Louie, where's Ernie? There he is. And Mr. Ernie, how are you, buddy? You all right, buddy? Yeah, everybody's a little And this is the other outside crew. The Lady Lacey, Pumpkin, Laverne, and Snowflake. And these are Heidi's girls, right Heidi? She's so precious. These are her girls, she takes good care of them. Look at her. <laughs> what a sweetie. What a sweetie. Yep, she keeps them all safe. There are plenty of coyotes out here, and wild dogs that would love to eat a goat. And Heidi will not allow that. All right.
All right. These guys are a little overwhelming. There's about a hundred birds in here. <laughs> They're all over your feet, under your feet, trying to get fed. So plenty of food for everybody, but they still act like all of these folks separate Mr. Curly here he doesn't like to share with Mr. Milo and Jewel will bulldoze everybody they don't get a whole lot of pellet feed because they forage using the uh, pelleted alfalfa uh, that helps me maintain control because these folks are very very fond of the pelleted feed so so long as I feed that to them once or twice a day whoa they will pretty much do whatever I want them to do so long as I'm shaking a bucket with feed in it and also for Miss Jewel she produces large amount of milk for us so we want to make sure that if she doesn't find all the calories that she needs that we supplement for her. We're gonna get her milked. You ready, Miss Jewel? Woo! <laughs> Silly girl. And then we're gonna put them out in the woods so they can forage. Forage so they can forage. Happy girl. Unhappy Milo, because he already ate all his food. All right, we'll milk quickly. Get him out to forage. up a, a series of electric fence sections we don't actually hook them up to electricity because it's super temporary but we just make a lane system our driveway is like a raindrop you have a Y right here that goes up towards the house and then comes back around towards our feed shed over here oh to keep these goobers out of our gardens and anywhere else we don't want them to be, we go ahead and set up these fences and makes moving them much more pleasant. We just stamp it into the ground and prop it up. And this is enough to deter them, get them to go where I want them to go. <clears throat> fence number two and then I have one way down here keeps them from going to the highway there there's plenty of food for them to eat out here and I forgot to show you earlier I, I showed you uh, my wheelbarrow coming down the driveway to feed these ladies uh, but I forgot to record the actual feeding and I'm I can guarantee you they already ate all the food but here's these lovely ladies it's pinky and peppa pig and yes, they have eaten all their food. Uh, whoop! They are ready to move. You can see the difference between what this looks like, grass and bare dirt. They have moonscaped what's in here. Uh, but this is precisely what we want them for. We want to help clear the forest, 
uh, main, to make new pasture and also dig up indigenous seed that's been long forgotten about. All right, we'll put up the last fence. Yeah, get these animals moving. Doesn't always go as planned. Obviously. <laughs> All right, so that beautiful network of fences that I just showed you, Curly just stepped right over one of them. So, we'll see if we can persuade him to go where we want him to go. Ha! Ha! There we go. Oh, Lord. All right, I'm gonna go open the gate. Come on, buddy. Now, this is the fun part. If they don't all go together, I gotta leave the gate open, try to get them to go in without anybody else coming out. Not always the easiest, but it looks like we're not gonna have too difficult of a time. Get these goobers where they need to go. Milo wants his mama. Come on, buddies. Good job, guys. All right, not bad. All right, huh? Yes. Everybody eating up all the green stuff. Thank you, ladies. Y'all are so well behaved. the baby meat birds are taken care of they do have plenty of food and plenty of water they can use some new bedding we'll have to get in here and do that soon but they're good for now and whoo last but not least we have a, another set of meat birds across the street that we need to go feed water and move I'll show you how that's done as well. Well, folks, I told you I was going to show you us moving the meat birds, and I failed to do so. You might just have to tune in on the next video. They've already been moved, fed, watered, everybody's happy. And we're not gonna do it twice in one day. But we'll do it again tomorrow. But those are the farm shores in a nutshell. See you on the next one.